You guys, we just got one of the coolest announcements from OpenAI today. I have not been this excited about an announcement in AI in a very, very long time. Okay, I guess just from a month ago when Claude 2 came out, but that's like years in AI time, okay? This is huge news. We are going to be able to eventually create our own fine-tuned models that are trained on our own writing if I am reading this correctly. Let me walk you through the announcement and I'll talk about some of the implications. Let's go. All right, this is the initial announcement that came out from OpenAI just minutes ago as I'm recording this. And, and if you're watching this the day it comes out, this is the day after this announcement came out. So I got this right on the, I, I shifted everything in my schedule so that I could come and talk about this one today. So you'll, the, all of the videos you see coming out over the next couple of days, I recorded before this, but uh, let's just take a look at this. So the announcement says GPT 3.5 turbo fine tuning and API updates. Developers can now bring their own data to customize GPT 3.5 turbo for some, for their use cases. Now, before you get too excited, this is not something that is going to be easily available to the public just yet. The, if you are a coder, if you're familiar with Python, you should be able to do this right now, starting immediately. But, but from the sound of it, it's got a little ways to come before this is basically publicly available. So anyone could do it without too much effort, but it does say in the near future. So we should see this kind of capability soon. I am not a technical person. I'm not a coder. I don't really know Python. And so I, I might learn Python just for some of these things, but I, I have no doubt that these things will be available to us pretty, pretty shortly. So basically what this is saying is that, you know, it says since the release of GPT 3.5 Turbo, developers and businesses have asked for the ability to customize the model to create unique and differentiated experiences for their users. With this launch, developers can now run super supervised fine tuning to make this model perform better for their use cases. And so OpenAI is coming out of at this from the perspective of a business. So say I had a knowledge base. I wanted to train an AI on my knowledge base so I could have the AI work in my customer support center or something like that. And so that's kind of how the language is here. But basically what this is going to allow us to do is to create, is to train a model on our own books or any other writing that we've done. And I know some of you are probably thinking, whoa, could we train it on some other author out there? And the answer is unknown at this point. There does appear to be some censorship that they are going to have, some way of filtering through harmful things is what they talk about, but I'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself. So they're claiming that this will allow for improved steerability, reliable output formatting, and custom tone. This is probably the most relevant for authors like you and me. Fine tuning is a great way to hone the qualitative feel of the model output, such as its tone, so it better fits the voice of businesses' brands. Again, it's using that business language, but you could think of this as an author's style. A business with a recognizable brand voice can use fine tuning for the model to be more consistent with their tone. So you, again, you can make it seem like, okay, we're going to be imitating the tone and the style of the data that you feed it. it says in addition to increased performance, fine tuning also enables businesses to shorten their prompts while ensuring similar performance. So basically their goal with this is to make it so that you don't have to dump an, a huge style prompt into uh, ChatGPT. Or, or sorry, this will probably be an OpenAI playground. This will allow us to shorten the prompt because we don't have that huge style guide in there. So then it digs into the steps that you'd have to take to create your own model here. And again, this is not for the average person, right? This is for anyone who's intimately familiar with Python and coding languages, but it does give you some of the steps that you'll need to take. It's not too clear yet exactly how you would feed it the data that you want to give it. Like if you have a book, how would you feed that in here? That's not particularly clear to me yet, but again, I'm not an expert in these things, so I don't really know. 
<laughs> One of the things it does say here in the fine print here, it says we will also be debuting a fine tuned UI uh, or user interface. I do know that much in the near future, which will give developers easier access to information about ongoing fine tuning jobs, completed model snapshots and more. So what I'm hoping this means is that there will eventually be some kind of user interface, some dashboard or someplace where we can go and feed it our information and just make it easier to fine tune that model that way. And if we don't see that, I am sure we're going to see programs like Sudorite or other tools out there create their own UIs that you can then use to do this. I would hate to do it through a third party like that instead of just going directly to the horse's mouth with OpenAI. But there you go. I, I have no doubt that this will be, you know, it says it'll be developed in the near future. And so hopefully we'll be able to, to see more information about that. Now it does have this information here about safety. This was interesting to me, but it's very vague. It says it is very important to us that the deployment of fine tuning is safe to preserve the default mo model safety features through the fine tuning process. Fine tuning training data is passed through our moderation API and a GPT-4 powered moderation system to detect unsafe training data that conflicts with our safety standards. So I think naturally this would mean that you're not going to be able to train it on genuinely harmful material. I know a lot of people have a problem with the censorship that OpenAI has on their stuff. And so you are likely not going to be able to train your data on anything that violates that censorship as it currently stands. What I don't know is, is this going to mean you can't filter, you can't feed the AI, the fine-tuned AI copies of say a author's work that is not you. So being the Brandon Sanderson fan that I am, I probably, like, could I take all of Brandon Sanderson's works and create a fine-tuned model around that? I don't think that would be a very ethical thing to do, but I have no doubt that there are going to be people out there that want to do that kind of thing. So is that going to take care of things like that? And if not, uh, goodness, we're going to have a lot more lawsuits on our hands because that's going to be a concern for a lot of people. Uh, let's talk about pricing for a little bit. This is really interesting. It basically says the cost of training is 0 0.008 cents per thousand tokens. If you recall, a thousand tokens is about 750 words, roughly. And so it says here that using this GPT 3.5 turbo mode, the model, if you had 100,000 tokens, which is roughly uh, the size of, of an average book, it would cost you about $2.40 to train that model on that amount of work. So if I have like, you know, 10 books that I'm training it and they're all roughly that size, that'll cost me a little, a little more than 20 bucks. So that's a pretty good price in my opinion. Now this is, let, let's just go back to this again. This is for GPT 3.5. This is not GPT 4. However, they do say elsewhere in their announcement that the models that are fine-tuned like this are able to perform equally or, and sometimes often better than GPT-4 for that specific task that it's been trained on. So if I train it on my books, it's going to be able to write like me better than GPT-4 can um, using the 3.5 model. Also, something that they have also revealed here at, in uh, this article and elsewhere is that they are planning on doing a GPT-4 based version of this and they say it'll be l available later in the fall. I don't know what they mean by later in the fall. They also say in another area, they say later this year, but fall to me, I mean, it's almost fall. It's we're in the middle of August right now. And so September, October, like what are we talking about? We're we talking November. I guess people would still call November part of fall, but we're going to be seeing this exact same technology come out for GPT-4 as well, which means we should be able to get even better. Now, I imagine the costs to train a custom version of GPT-4 would be a lot more than training a custom version of GPT-3.5. They also mentioned that this is the GPT-3.5 Turbo, which means this is not the slightly newer version of GPT-3.5 that had a 16K token limit. 
which m means that it could read longer. Hopefully we get that in the future. It does say that they that they will along with GPT-4. So we're going to be seeing this roll, rolled out. And I even debated making this video because a lot of this is not available immediately, but I just had to talk about it and talk about the implications because this is pretty big. This is something that I know authors have been asking for, for forever. And I know it's one of the most requested features that Pseudorite has, but the reason Pseudorite hasn't come out with a feature like this is it's a legitimately hard thing to do because, I mean, you, until now, there hasn't really been a way to do it on our end. You had to be these big companies in order to train these models. And it, there isn't really a good way to create your own custom model. And so that's why all of these companies like Pseudorite just didn't come out with a feature like this because you couldn't do that. In order to do it, you would have to, every time you prompt it, you'd have to give it a bunch of your work to read your style and then hope that it read that style well and it continues writing well from that. But then every time you're feeding it that information, it just, you know, it causes your costs to go up. And this way you could just train a model on all of those things once. You spend the money once to train it. And then it should, if all goes well, follow that style, follow everything you want it to do with that style. So I'm very, very excited about this. I can already think of two models that I would be training. I'd be training one on my fiction, all of the books that I've written. I've written 12 so far, plus a couple of, uh, a bunch of different short stories and things like that. I would train one model on that. I would also probably train a different model for use in web writing because I've written a lot of articles. And so I'd want to train it on all of those articles on all of my websites. And I'm not even sure if this is how it'll work, but I wonder if you could also make this like a database instead of just training it on the tone of your writing, but training it on a database of information. If, uh, for instance, I have a website about mythology, if I could just train a model on the all of the data that I have available to me on different mythologies and things like that, could I then create this like chatbot that is specifically knowledgeable about mythology? And I think we will be able to do that kind of a thing, which is pretty cool. I, I can imagine maybe a chatbot on my website where people could ask questions about mythology, or I could use it as a writing assistant for writing those articles. Really cool stuff. Now, in addition to the blog post, there was also this guide released which goes into basically all of the same things but in a little more detail that i've talked about so far it goes into a little more detail about how you could set this up if you're familiar with python and, and can are, are familiar enough to actually do that sort of thing but some of the things i wanted to talk about here was the faq that they have at the end and i'll have both the blog post and this guide linked down below for sure so here's one of the questions that I kind of already mentioned, but it says, when can I fine tune GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K, which are the more advanced models? And it says, we plan to release support for fine tuning both of these models later this year. So, I mean, we're in the latter half of 2023. So this is already closer to us than, than we realize, I think. And then you can, you, one of the questions is, how do I know if my fine-tuned model is actually better than the base model? We recommend generating samples from both the base model and the fine-tuned model on a test set of chat conversations and comparing the samples side by side. Definitely something I would be doing. This one was interesting to me. Can I continue fine-tuning a model that has already been fine-tuned? So let's say you train a model on one of your books and then you want to continue training on others of your books. Maybe as you continue writing books, and you get better and better and better in your writing, you want to train the AI on that work. And they say currently, no, we do not currently support continuing the fine tuning process once the job is finished. So that's a bit of a disappointment. But then they say, we plan to support this in the near future. Again, near future is kind of vague, but the fact that they say near future instead of just in the future makes me think that maybe this is something that will also be here this year or you know, hopefully the sooner the better. So those are, the, are a couple of the frequently asked questions that I thought were of interest here. So I will link bo to both of these down below. If you figure out how to fine tune your own model, if you have the technical prowess for that, I would invite you to go visit our Discord and tell people what you've learned. And if I'm able to figure this out, I will make a video about that as well. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and get excited because we are in the future, you guys.